Hello everybody, my name is Infinity, and if you don't know, I am the face and the voice behind all the content under Infinity Crafting Co. So anytime you see that name on the web, 9 times out of 10, it's me. Hello. Today's topic for Vlogist Day 11 is going to be one that I think I talk about maybe every other video that I do <laughs> um, that's kind of vloggy along these lines. And it's a question that pops up very often in like YouTube community groups and just things that, again, I don't think YouTubers really talk about that much when it comes to being on camera and actually being a YouTuber. So that topic is how to YouTube when you're shy. <laughs> So before we jump into the video, I just want to say that I am, I would consider myself to be highly qualified to talk about this subject. I, let me see, I was an only child for almost 10 years. I was very quiet in school, didn't talk that much. I had moderate social anxiety and I could barely look people in the eye and talk to them and hold like rational conversations up until several years ago. So. I know all about being shy <laughs> before we get there and I know or I realize that you know other people's impressions of me are a little actually way different from, from how I would consider myself to be other people are like oh you know you executed that well you're so eloquent <laughs> what no no so today I want to talk about how I personally have gone about doing these videos for the past two years and not freaking myself out and how I continue to do them and little tips and tricks to kind of help you along the way because maybe you're someone who wants to get into vlogging or YouTubing or something and you just don't have the nerve. Look, if I can do it, you can do it. So let's jump into this video. Also, before I get started, I did want to mention today is National Crochet Day. So for all my crocheters out there, happy National Crochet Day. I hope you guys are making awesome projects. All right, so my first step in overcoming my shyness, at least on camera, was in fact recognition. And I know this is going to sound silly, but you have to recognize and realize that you might be a little shy, a little bashful, and there's nothing wrong with that in general. People tend to have this really odd romanticized vision of shy people and I mean you know some people think it's kind of cutesy or whatever but it's like it's actually kind of bothersome and problematic um, when it comes to just actually functioning in general so you know you have to recognize that and of course you have to know your boundaries of what you can and cannot do um, which is subjective but <laughs> You have, to, you have to understand those boundaries. And I mean, Rome wasn't built in a day, so don't expect to just jump in front of the camera and be like, oh, I'm no longer shy, I'm cured. It doesn't quite work like that. Um, when I first started hopping in front of the camera and not just doing tutorial type videos, I was a train wreck. <laughs> and I feel like nowadays going back and looking at those videos, I realized just how like awkward and stiff I was and you know, again, you have to recognize that, okay, this is an obstacle. It's there. How big is this obstacle? How wide is this obstacle? Is it actually as great of an obstacle as I think it is? Because, like I said, it's a little subjective. And, you know, um, I go back to when I first started being a student leader. That was, you know, it, God put me there <laughs> to pull me out of my shyness. I believe that to my core. But, you know, in the beginning, I felt almost, um, not tortured, that's, that's a little extreme, but it wasn't pleasant because, again, I realized that I would have to get up in front of like 60 plus people at any given point and talk and, you know, tell them what I know about the institution and just generally lead them or try to be a leader. And that honestly terrified me <laughs> at the beginning. And probably the first year and a half, I was absolutely terrified. But then, you know what? Coming back, I got to hear feedback from students that were in my orientation sessions or whatever. And they were like, you know what? You were so awesome and it inspired me. And I'm like, huh? <laughs> that, no. <laughs> I had a headache. I was kind of lightheaded. That, those sessions were not working for me <laughs> in the beginning. So, you know, 
And mind over matter, it's, um, it's one of those things that I think people say and they don't realize, okay, yeah, you can, you can mind over matter things, but again, Rome wasn't built in a day, so I mean, you can't just like one night be a frantic mess and then the next minute when you're in front of people or when you're on the camera, you're just like movie star status no <laughs> so that it doesn't work like that and that's okay that is okay I fully recommend people take baby steps when it comes to doing things like this because I mean you know you want to pace yourself and make sure that you're comfortable with what you're doing you also want to do a lot of reflection and I'm gonna come back to reflection call it the teacher in me but that is one of our magical words <laughs> In the teaching realm reflection you were in constant reflection and I don't mean like nitpicking about every flaw or every flub that you make on camera or in speech in general or whatever it is you're doing I'm not saying that but just reflect like you know okay I recorded this video my first day and I noticed XYZ about it that I did or did not like so for the future references I will either do or not do XYZ and hopefully make my content a little bit closer to the quality that I want it to be so that type of reflection and self-evaluation is important um, which we should be constantly doing that anyway in our lives, but that's another story. <laughs> um, specifically when it comes to being on camera, being a content creator, specifically a video content creator where your audience is in the hundreds potentially, um, or thousands, or you know, it's the World Wide Web. YouTube is the second largest search engine in the world that has ever existed. Not to freak you out. <laughs> it does not freak me out. And you know what? It, it shouldn't. It really shouldn't. Because, I mean, anything and everything that you put online, they always told you anyway that it's going to be online and it's going to be visible to lots of prying eyes. So, if that freaks you out, you probably shouldn't be on camera at the moment. <laughs> so, I mean, like, that's just the fact. Alright, and then within that recognition, you want to start to kind of understand some of that underlyingness <laughs> of why are you as bashful as you are you know everybody has their own story you know so I'm not knocking anybody I got my own stories as to why I feel like I was shy so I mean you know or am shy or just I don't think I'm shy so much now it's just introverted I watch I'm quiet I'm more of an ambivert now but anyway I digress you know you have to understand the qualities the cause and effect kind of thing that causes you to be who you are right now and if you're looking to be on the camera you have to truly be comfortable with not only just being filmed but being yourself so if you don't understand yourself you can't be comfortable with yourself and you can't function on the camera like in my personal humble opinion um my second my second key thing was to just embrace it I knew I was shy but I also knew that you know I that shyness wasn't going to help me be successful in life in general I knew that I wanted to teach and you know teaching is grueling kids can be grueling um, you know you can't be that timid teacher that's just quiet and shy and like okay children sit down and we're gonna do this lesson and you're gonna listen to me because I'm the teacher they're not gonna take you seriously <laughs> so you know it's the same deal if you're on camera and you're trying to vlog and you're just like oh my god I can't talk today I'm so shy and you freeze up you know you, you can't do that you have to loosen up embrace the fact that you're shy like embrace it in the way that you know you know it's there but don't let it overcome you and don't let it just take hold of everything that you are because you can't function like that with anything when you're shy like that or when you're, you know, frozen or paralyzed by your shyness. I hope that made sense. My third thing, nobody's perfect. So, <laughs> and you know, at this, this point, even I'm not perfect and I don't think anybody has ever perfected this, but what I call camera matter. So, you know, when you're on camera, are you sitting up straight? Are you, like, rigid sitting up straight? Not do you have good posture, but are you rigid? Are you being kind of stuffy? Are you putting up a facade in, to a point where you don't seem genuine? Um, that kind of thing. I can kind of understand when you can't hold, 
can't hold eye contact with that lens. It's a little weird. And so when I first started, I know personally I would have a little piece of tape just under, it was like painter's tape. It was blue and it was right up under my lens where nobody could see it and I would kind of keep my eye on that so I could potentially focus on that lens but eventually I'd look away and you know I know that I still to this day will look away from the camera but you know what I also realized that you know when you're holding conversations with people you do look at them in the eye but you don't just stare at them like you're trying to read into their core <laughs> you know um, it's okay it's natural to look away kind of bounce your eyes around the room and something I think too that attributes to me doing that now that I think about it is the fact that I was talking in front of people and I was making eye contact with people so making that transition back onto camera is a little weird when you have just that one focal point so you know and I have artwork and picture frames on my back wall so I'm constantly looking around bouncing around the room whatnot so that's something and it's just natural to move it kind of adds to the quirkiness I guess but it's, I mean as long as you're making some contact and you're kind of making that connection with the people because when people are looking at that YouTube video they're looking directly at you <laughs> unless they're like into their project knitting or crocheting or something they're looking directly at you not to freak you out all right so my fourth thing is to just you know chill be yourself I guarantee you that absolutely everybody who has found growth or gain on YouTube or any other video streaming platform was just being themselves and their own element. So, you know, that goes in tandem with understanding yourself and just having a feel for what you want to do as far as your content and things like that. Um, you know, people love your quirks. <laughs> I personally am I admit that I'm quirky and I admit that I might be a little sarcastic with my humor um, but apparently over time that has made me funny so <laughs> I I realize that and I work on that I work with it um, and use it for my advantage and I've also had different people to shout me out and have commented on personality traits that they noticed and I was like oh I never noticed that but like I did I don't consciously shift to fit those expectations per se I just keep doing what I feel like I have been doing and it works for me so you know just relax nobody's scrutinizing you that hard and usually when they are their opinions don't matter <laughs> in certain respects like like I said in a previous video constructive criticism when you get it constructive criticism is great because it helps you to grow that's why I branched out onto reddit um, occasionally I post over there these days I've been busy so I haven't been posting as much but I post things over there I kind of get a little bit of feedback try to pick people's brains and kind of see what works and what does it and how you know everybody reacts to a thing or something so experimentation <laughs> um, I've gotten from doing that I have gotten both good and bad types of comments and then some comments I'm just looking at and like <sighs> people I don't know what I was gonna say but anyway okay so yeah I mean you know embrace your quirks if your quirkiness on your channel is working for you then keep at it I mean nobody wants to watch the same exact personality across each and every channel it would get boring nobody would have any subscribers nobody would ever experience growth um, on any platform if everybody was the same so some of the things that I do kinda to prep myself for getting on camera especially when I'm having to like talk about something or explain something about myself I get so giggly because I'm nervous <laughs> and you know it's okay it's okay to get nervous before you start shooting a video um, you know God bless those that do lives I, I don't <laughs> it's not that I don't think I could do them but you know realizing that like when certain things that I try to cover in videos I get really um, I don't know I don't know why I get nervous about them but I just do and so a lot of editing goes into these videos cutting out all my weird laughter <laughs> and I know that sounds contra contradictory to what I just said but there's a there's a fine line between quirky and just looking crazy so I don't want to get on here looking crazy so I do my edits and you know they work out just fine my humor still comes across I'm good um, so you know <laughs> be yourself 
like I said, the whole tape thing under the lens when I first got um, into recording, when I first got a camera. When I was um, recording with my phone, I was out of luck. I, w I was completely out of luck on that one. So I would do my best. I would look at my phone screen and try to be as personable as possible. Nowadays, I can more or less continue to look directly into the lens when I talk sometimes. Apparently not when my grandmother watches my videos, but that's another story. Um, <laughs> I also have a tripod now that has the little um, symbol. Its little branding symbol is like right below the lens, so either I can look directly into the lens or if it gets a little weird I can look at that little red dot and I'm fine and kind of maintain that personable contact. But that goes back to camera manner. These are little fidgety things that you figure out as you go along. Um, another thing that kind of helps, you know, some people talk with their hands. I am definitely a hand talker and my mom teases me about it, but I mean, it helps me get my point across because like, if I'm doing this, I know I'm on the brink of finding my words <laughs> or if I'm just throwing my hands around, I'm excited about something, you know, it just kind of helps put emphasis to my words for me. Um, when I go back and watch my videos, I'm like, oh, okay, that doesn't look as bad as I thought it did. So, you know, that, that's okay. Um, some people don't like the whole hand fidget thing, so something that kind of works with that, if you don't want people to know that you're being nervous, <laughs> um, if you have like a little fidget spinner or something, you can have your camera zoomed in, where it's basically a headshot, kind of like this video is right now, though it was not on purpose, I promise. Um, and you can be fidgeting with something below the camera and looking completely normal. Um, right now I am moving my hands around because I talk with my hands, but you would never be able to tell that because the camera is so zoomed in. So, one of those tips and tricks for that. Um, like I said at the beginning of the video, reflection is key. Like I said, expound upon what you're doing that seems to be working for you or what you're doing that other people seem to enjoy about you and just take that into account. Don't try to fit into that constraint. Like I said, I've never, like, out of all the shout outs that I've gotten over time, I've never actually changed what I was doing, per se, in my videos. I have gotten very many compliments that made me blush about my personality and all that on camera, and I'm like, oh, okay, <laughs> thank you, but I don't, I don't try to fit into that mold, because when you do that, you gain this type of, I don't, do I want to call it anxiety? You do get anxious a little bit. You just feel like you have to conform to a specific, um, what, ideal image type thing and it, it stresses you out and that can lead to burnout and you're not even going to want to do YouTube anymore at all because you're not being yourself. So it's like just point blank period, be yourself <laughs> because that will get you way further than being ingenuine and stiff and frozen like a deer in headlights. Reflection, like I said, constantly reflect what doesn't work for you um, what are some habits that you do that you want to correct I personally when I edit my videos I look at it and I'm like okay did I stutter too much in this video how many cuts did I have to do before I actually got my lines right I don't write scripts for my videos I just talk off the heart off the top of my head because I feel like that flows more naturally for me and if it's a topic that I like I will go on and on and on and on, much like a teacher. I suppose that occupation will fit me, especially if, like I said, if it's something that's really catching of my attention or if I'm really passionate about it, that is something that I, I can just talk about it for who knows how long. But reflection will always be the key to anything to improving in life. Even if you're just in school, you can reflect on how you did that semester. Did you try? Did you not try? How much harder could you try? Maybe you could relax a little bit more, take your breaks. I'm an advocate for taking your breaks because, I mean, you just don't want the mental overload. So I do recommend that as well as a shy person doing YouTube. And this isn't a point that I wrote down either, so, hmm. Anyway, take your breaks. Like I said in a previous video, I take a hiatus. Um, and the first week of my hiatus, I do absolutely zip nada pertaining to YouTube. Um, I take that time to chill, rest my hands, do other things that I enjoy, which usually end up going back to crochet or painting or something. And, you know, I give myself that mental break because, I mean, it's like, it's not strenuous, but like I said, by the time I do get to my break, you know, it's, the semester just ended, 
I'm burnt out. I'm so ready to take like 12 naps per day. <laughs> so I take that time for me. And I find that often when you take that time for yourself, you start back doing your recordings or whatever. You come back and you're just as preppy and effervescent as you were before. So, you know, it's well worth taking those breaks. And like I think, I think, was that yesterday or the other day when I did that video? Consistency is key. So, like I said in that video, people who upload daily, I guarantee you, I am willing to bet almost any amount of money <laughs> that they are not actually getting up every single day, every single day in front of the camera and in Premiere or whatever they edit in and uploading. I guarantee you they're not doing that. That is so stressful. Don't do that. Scheduling is key if you're going to get on here and do things. And it's also a method to go about using in order to not tax yourself, like overtax yourself and burn yourself out. But most of the time when people are uploading three, four, five, six, seven times a week or more, because some people post two videos a day, that stuff is pre-recorded. <laughs> Now, people who do things like Vlogus or Veda, yeah, we're getting up every day, getting on camera. We're doing that. <laughs> it's only a month. It's probably the only time we do that. Um, pe some people do it in April, which is cool. But, you know, it's probably the only one or two times a year that we're actually up every day, making content every day. Otherwise, the stuff is like nine times out of ten pre-recorded. It's scheduled. It's uploaded. And we are living our best lives <laughs> outside of YouTube. So... That is something to consider too, especially if you know you're shy or whatever, you have your bashful moments where you just do not want to get on camera. I don't care what you have to do <laughs> um, or you feel like you have to do, you just don't want to be on camera at any given point. And it's good to have that pre-uploaded content in the event that you go through one of those spells. I do understand because I, I get there. <laughs> I get there sometimes. Um, and like I said, baby steps. Baby steps. Rome was not built in a day. Nobody's rushing you out of your turtle shell. Nobody's, you know, lighting fire under you to get you out there. If you really want to do video content creation, then, you know, let your heart lead you. Personally, like I said, I prayed <laughs> a lot <laughs> when I was trying to come out of my shell because I'm like, okay, I can't stay like this forever. It would freak me out to talk in front of a bunch of people. And now, by the way... I'm talking in front of over 900 people right now on this video on YouTube, potentially more, and I guarantee you now I'm just as calm about it. Now, <laughs> there will be many bloopers that I will have to cut out of this video because, you know, I'm a person and I lose my train of thought sometimes, but it, that's beside the point. <laughs> that's beside the point. But what I'm trying to say is, you know, don't rush yourself. If, you're, if you, you truly want to do a video channel thing, It'll come naturally, eventually, you know, step by step, day by day, figure out that upload schedule and just do you, just do you. Don't worry about trying to be somebody that's like way up here when you are just like walking out the gate. It, it can be stressful and again, lead to burnout because even those people that are seemingly way up here on the totem pole, they started way down here crawling <laughs> you know and I mean it's a wonderful revolution really to like look back and realize wow I've come a really long way and I think that's one of the fun things about being a content creator with the videos is because you do actually get to see the progress that you're making as a person especially if you are really clamped up and introverted and shy and whatnot you get to see okay I started off like a potato and now I'm a full bloomed plant you know just thriving so that's just my idea. This is by no means an all-encompassing list, but it's just like the things that I came into realization of um, over time and things that I still work at. I'm not perfect and I'm honestly not aiming to be perfect, but if I can, you know, just put out quality content that people enjoy and will continue to enjoy, then I am just as satisfied. Like I said, YouTube is fun for me now. Two, three years ago, I would have never thought <laughs> that I would ever be sitting up in front of a camera recording and talking to hundreds and hundreds of people. I barely wanted to talk to, <laughs> what, four people at one given time. So this has definitely been a transitional thing. Completely transitional. 
and it blows my mind honestly but I am grateful for the experience and I'm also very glad to share my experiences because I feel like you know we all learn off of one another and it's not just a feeling it's actually factually studied we all learn off of one another you know people trying to emulate other people when they're doing their content creation they're just good and fine you know um, you have an example a set example of how you want to be but you don't have to verbatim copy that you have to put your own spin on things and you just have to work at your own pace so I I'm also an advocate for that you know people just blossoming at their own rate and yeah I've gotten many com comments slash compliments um, for you know just talking about the things that I do and I am always glad to expound upon things um, that I've noticed or even if you have your own questions I love community engagement so if you have questions please send them my way I do not have videos planned for the entire month <laughs> specifically um, for that reason I wanted to be able to kind of reach out and have people come back ask me questions and let me turn my wheels and try to answer them to the best of my ability if you enjoyed today's video don't forget to leave me a thumbs up if you're on YouTube, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you don't miss out on future videos. I will be doing vloggers all month. Woo, this is day 11. I have 20 more days. Wow. Um, <laughs> this is going to be interesting. If you're on Instagram, don't forget to leave me a heart. And go ahead and hit that follow button because like I said, I post these videos every day for this month and I look forward to answering your questions. If you are on Instagram, you can DM me or you can ask your questions in the comment section below. If you're on YouTube, go ahead and leave me a comment and ask me questions. I love questions. They're fun. So until tomorrow, guys, happy making. You know what, I suppose one more thing before I do leave is that self-efficacy is very important. That self-motivation slash stick-to-itness is very, very key, but that is going to be a future video. But I just wanted to bring that up. Make sure you have that. Alright, talk to you guys tomorrow.